Hi everyone, welcome to this video for Pearson 2.0, GCSE English Language. Uh, we're going to be looking at one of the evaluation questions in this video using the pleasure telephone extract. We're going to be looking at paper 1, question 5. In terms of how to approach this question or the question strategy, you must write three points and there's no need to analyse language and structure. When I teach this question, I use the traditional point example explanation formula for, with my students. But there are numerous ways that your teacher might teach this uh, to you, and therefore those ways are just as valid. Whatever way your teacher tells you, though, in terms of how to prepare for this task, you must select evidence from the extract, and you must carefully and judiciously select quite short quotes as well. And that's why I say in English, highlighters tend to be your best friend because you can visually see which evidence you want to use. Um, importantly for this question, because it's a reading skill and because it's an evaluation question, the um, examiner wants you to make inferences. They want you to take the evidence and interpret it for yourself in your own words. So the questions therefore that you have to ask yourself in your head when you're reading this evidence is what does the evidence mean to you? What do you interpret from the evidence you've selected? Or alternatively, what does it suggest to you? And that word suggest is in bold because it's quite a key word that you can use in your response. But I'll talk more about that a bit later. This is 10 minutes approximately because the question is six marks. So you're looking at two marks per point. Um, in terms of what the question looks like in your exam booklet, so you can see here that they will reprint um, a section of the extract in a little box for you where all your answers are located. And arguably the most important part of this uh, question is the bit there where, where I put the arrow, because underneath the task, uh, or underneath the, the box, sorry, is the task that you need to be finding evidence um, about. So the task that we're going to be looking at in this video today is that the writer is, is correct and effective in persuading readers that the telephone, the pleasure telephone, will change people's lives positively. For me, that is something that students must read first, because then once they've understood what they're looking for, they can then find the evidence in the box relatively um, quickly. Um, so always look at the task itself, because that will tell you what evidence you're finding. To give some context first, um, what was the, tele the pleasure telephone? So the pleasure telephone came at the end of the Victorian era, around 1898. And I think the best way that I can describe it, it was like a radio telephone, uh, which people had in their homes, which gave them access to a variety of different information about a variety of different subjects and topics. So it could be entertainment news, sports news, but it could also be traditional news as in current affairs, um, and um, they were able to access this, this information from their own homes, meaning they no longer had to go out and get a newspaper. And of course, as it is the case now, we're very used to having information at our fingertips, um, and this is something that clearly has um, been um, advantageous to people right since the end of the Victorian era. So what we need to do is we need to find them um, evidence in this extract that proves that the telephone will change people's lives positively. So now that we've understood what we're looking for, we need to find the evidence and we need to find three bits of evidence, preferably from this extract. So it says the subscriber has only to put down his receivers and wait a few minutes for the local news or the theatrical art or science notices. Next come the latest foreign, provincial or sporting information and all kinds of society and political matter. And this news not only comes with extraordinary promptness, but it is brought to one's own fireside without the trouble of running into the street for the paper. But the name of the telephone, its full description is the news and entertainment telephone, implies that the instrument is not monopolised by news. Perhaps the most popular feature of it is its connection with the theatres, concert halls and the hundred and other one places of amusement in the city. So in there somewhere is going to be three bits of evidence um, that proves that this writer is successful in telling us that this telephone will change people's lives positively. And here we have three bits of evidence. So wait a few minutes, the actual range of topics or, or issues that the person can listen to, as well as the fact that the information can be brought to one's own fireside. So 
again, that middle quote is probably a little bit too long. I wouldn't want to copy all of that out, but I would definitely want to copy a small section of it in my answer. So all this evidence does in fact prove that the pleasure telephone will change people's lives positively. But for our inference, we need to ask ourselves why. Why does this evidence that I have highlighted here uh, prove that this telephone will change people's lives positively and will be a benefit to them? We'll come back to that in a second. Something else that you, you can do um, in your evaluation question for paper one, question five, is actually argue that the writer is not successful in suggesting that the telephone will change people's lives positively. So we can use the three, uh, the same extract um, as before and find three reasons why we think this telephone will not change people's lives positively. So again, evidence will be in here somewhere. And the evidence that we can use perhaps could be these bits. Um, his receivers suggesting there's a degree of sexism here. Uh, perhaps some people uh, can't access this kind of, of information because maybe they're not educated enough. And also perhaps people might want to continue uh, reading the paper because it's perhaps easier for them. So this evidence does suggest that the writer does not persuade readers that the telephone will change people's lives positively. But again, we've got to ask ourselves why. What does this evidence suggest to us? So before we go back to the extracts, just to um, go back to P paragraphs, which is how I teach this question. When I teach this question for the first time, I get students to use three post-it notes and I get them to write this information on each of the post-it notes. And I then get them to stick the post-it notes on top of each other to create a little um, flip chart almost, um, showing them the three components of a paragraph. And this is quite a formulaic. Um, you know, you can always start with the point. The writer successfully shows that and then use the question to finish that sentence and make a point about the evidence you're making specifically. The evidence is therefore the bit that you copy from the extract, but not long quotes, please, if you don't want to spend too long copying. And finally comes your inference, the explanation. And the sentence stems, this suggests that, this implies that, or simply the word suggesting is always a good prompt for you to give some kind of personal insight. So these, this formula is what I'll be using in this video. So going back to the extracts, using the evidence that suggests that the pleasure telephone will benefit people's lives, we've got three points here. So the point and the evidence is in the top row of the tables, and in the bottom row is the inference. So one point could be that there's a degree of convenience because people can access information quickly, suggesting that access to information is almost instant, which appeals to people that want information at their fingertips. And if people are accessing information quickly, you're going to have perhaps a more informed and more educated society. The second point could be to do with the actual variety of topics, uh, all kinds of society and political matter, suggesting that there is a varied selection of topics and issues that listeners can tune into. And of course, the more variety you have, um, the more appealing it is to a wider audience because people are going to find something for them. Finally, the last point could be to do again with the fact that people don't have to leave their homes to access this information and they can stay by one's own fireside, which implies that using the phone is convenient and means that people don't have to go outside to get a paper, um, which would have obviously been the case before. Um, it is an easier and much more convenient way to access the latest information. So those three points would suggest that the writer does persuade us that the telephone will affect people's lives positively. However, if you wanted to disagree and suggest that this telephone will not actually um, impact on people's lives positively, then you could potentially show these or, or allude to these three um, pieces of evidence. So we might say, for example, because of the word his, that there's a degree of sexism here, that women are excluded from using this telephone. Uh, so there could be sexist notions. And if you're excluding half the population, it's not going to benefit everyone. So there might be some kind of um, patriarchal bias here that this telephone is made for men. The second point that disagrees could be the fact that um, the actual content of the um, of the of what you can listen to suggests that there is a middle class bias because maybe it's going to be the middle classes who are going to be interested enough to look at the theatre. Uh, to think about political and social news. 
Um, and it also suggests, of course, that you might have to be literate and educated to benefit from this kind of information. And therefore, this telephone might exclude poorer people who are uneducated. You have to remember that at this time, um, you know, there were people in the cities and across the country working in factories, people that were um, uneducated, people that were poorly paid, people that were living in slums. And the question is, is are those people going to want to know about uh, political and societal matter? The final point could be about the fact that um, people might prefer a newspaper, um, which implies that the writer is favouring new technology and modernity instead of traditional paper-based information. Um, so if you remember 10 years ago, um, e-readers and Kindles um, came in and the fear at the time was that they will get rid of physical books. But as we know, physical books are still around, that book stops, bookshops are still around, and actually recent data suggests that people prefer physical books than e-readers. So sometimes the old-fashioned way is better for people, they prefer it. So if you're using a newspaper, you can easily flick to the page that you want, for example, rather than having to wait for the information on this phone. So those reasons would suggest that this telephone will not benefit all people. And again, it's for you to decide to what extent you want to agree, to what extent you want to disagree. So finally, to finish this video, what could a good response look like? And I, and I use the word could here because there are numerous different approaches to this task. But this is certainly what I would be asking my students to be doing. So the writer successfully persuades readers about the benefits of the telephone by mentioning its convenience, people will wait a few minutes for news and other notices, suggesting that access to information is almost instant, which appeals to people who usually want quick access to the information they need. If people are accessing up-to-date information, they will be more informed. That's the first point. The positive impact of the phone is then conveyed by reference to the varied subjects that people can listen to, such as society and political matter. This suggests that there is a wide selection of topics and issues discussed that would be interesting to listen to. There is a lot of variety which is bound to appeal to everyone and to different interests. But then I finish this response by giving a disagree, but the writer may not be successful because of assumptions that people can or want to listen to society and political matter. This suggests that there is a middle class bias present because the text suggests you must be literate and educated to benefit from the telephone. This may exclude poorer people or uneducated individuals who would make who would make the writer um, and would make the writer sorry less persuasive. So I've put two agree points to one disagree there, but three points and obviously those paragraphs have evidence in them and they also finish with some inference as well in terms of what this evidence means to me. So that is one example of how to approach the the paper one. Question 5 tasks for Pearson 2.0 uh, using the Pleasure Telephone extract. Thank you very much.